For my first climbing trip of 2021, my husband and I went to Ticino to learn multi-pitch climbing. We enrolled ourselves to a three-day course with Fabio Lupo of Kletteveld. Kletteveld is a company that offers climbing courses and other outdoor experiences all over Switzerland. Check out their homepage by clicking the link in the description box below. For this three-day course, we learned the basic knowledge and rope techniques of multi-pitch climbing. And in today's episode, I will share with you my first ever multi-pitch experience. I am also going to show you the essential gears that we needed for climbing, the terms Albi and I used to communicate with each other while climbing, the location where we climbed, and a glimpse of how building an anchor and the rope arrangement for abseiling looks like. I will also throw in some tips on how you can maximize your first multi-pitch experience if ever you decide to learn how to do it anytime soon. What is multi-pitch climbing? Multi-pitch climbing is simply climbing more than one pitch. Climbing routes that are longer than 30 meters. With the multi-pitch technique, you can climb an entire mountain. On the first day, we met Fabio together with other participants to get a quick introduction about multi-pitch, the equipment that we will need for the trip as well as the step-by-step -step procedure on how to make an anchor and the rope arrangement for upsailing. So what are the essential equipment for multi-pitch climbing? We need four locking carabiners, four quick draws or non-locking carabiners, one tube belay device, two 50 or 60 meter rope, one daisy chain, two long anchor slings, one prusik and an extra sling. Of course, this includes a harness, chalk bag, helmet, shoes and quick draws, which depend on how long the route will be. We just brought all of our 16 quick draws just to be sure. All of this equipment goes either on my harness or into my bag. Tip number one, bring a backpack that you can comfortably carry. Don't bring unnecessary stuff because we had to carry our own bags as we climb five pitches up the mountain. After we finished collecting all the gears we needed, we used this area of the stairs at Kletteveld headquarters as a setup for building an anchor. Here's me and Albi freezing to death while slowly figuring out the sequence of creating one. Same goes for arranging the rope for upsailing. Then do the upsailing. Rappelling down. Nice. For now, it's totally okay to mess up with the sequences because we have an entire weekend to practice this in Ticino. Time check. It's 6.15 in the morning and we're on the way to fetch Fabio and we're heading down to Tessin! <music> Tip number two Depending on the weather condition, consider dressing appropriately. If you will do it too during the winter season just like us, it's best to wear a down jacket. It's extremely light but it keeps you warm. It is also easier to tuck in your harness. Also, consider getting gloves. Trust me, you don't want your hands to freeze to death while belaying your partner. After a 3 hour drive, we are finally in Ticino. We parked our car, then we took a quick hike to where we're going to climb. Did you notice that there's no snow anywhere? Well, that's because Ticino is located at the south of Switzerland, next to Italy, where it is so much warmer than where we came from. Before we climb, Fabio explained first in detail everything that we need to know, like the actual plan for the two days that we will be here and the lessons that we will learn from him, like some solutions that we can apply when or if we face an unexpected problem up on the wall. What to do when you lose an important gear in the middle of your climb. Also, what to do when your partner gets injured up on the wall and so much more. Tip number three. 
If you are already with an expert like Fabio, take advantage of having him by asking tons of questions. Learn as much as you can from your coach. Think of different scenarios in your climbing experience where it needs clarification, explanation or solutions from a professional point of view. This is where we spent our entire Saturday climbing on slab. Climbing on a slab wall was supposed to be easy. As you can see, we're not really climbing. This was decided on purpose so we can concentrate more on important multi-pitch lessons. While for everyone this may be easy, but for me it wasn't. Until this trip, I really didn't know how to use my feet on slabs. I just don't get it. <laughs> when I rewatched my first climb, it took me 40 minutes to climb up to Albi. Everything's flat. Trust your feet. I don't know how to trust my feet. <laughs> I feel like I'm going to fall. Uh, what should I do? Put your feet uh, a bit less pointy, a little bit more flat uh, yeah. down. <laughs> Really? Yeah, I think so. Oh my god. I was so scared to move because I feel like sliding off the wall and I was so scared to fall. I actually resisted to fall. As a result, my feet, ankles and calves hurt so bad. And then Fabio came to the rescue. Bitte ablaufen. After that, I took two to three more falls just to get the feeling. And believe me or not, I started climbing like I'm walking on stairs. That 40 minute climb in the beginning became 5 minutes afterwards. <laughs> Tip number 4. If you're a scaredy cat like me when it comes to falling, do yourself a favor and get rid of it as early as you can. Get the sense of the feeling of falling right away because once you know the feeling and you know that you are safe on the rope, the entire climb will be so much more enjoyable. And you have more energy for the actual challenge, which is building an anchor and upsailing. <laughs> Another thing that I learned from this experience is how important communication is between me and Albi when climbing multi-pitch. There are actual fixed terminologies that Albi and I use for giving out different commands. We shout Kimi or Albi, ich bin am Stand or simply say Stand. That's the signal that I can now take him off belay because he is secured at the pitch. Then I will shout back, you are off belay, signaling him to start pulling up all the rope so that I can climb up. Before I climb up, I wait until Albi tells me that I can climb by shouting, Kim, climb. Yeah, but you have to pull the rope first. <laughs> 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 then I have to respond by shouting, Albi, I'm climbing. These commands have to be clearly and loudly communicated each time. There's only more than 15 meters of distance between us, so we have to shout. Saying each other's name is equally important because there could be other climbers climbing next to us and we don't want them to be confused with our calls. When it comes to abseiling, the first command that we need to shout is Achtung, Seil! <laughs> or in English, watch out for the ropes. 
This command is for anyone who is currently climbing on the wall and who might be in the direction where we will throw the rope, just to make sure that we won't hurt anyone down there. Once one of us is on the ground, we need to detach ourselves from the rope so that the other one can upsell. That person has to shout, Seil is frei, or in English, the rope is free. Communication is highly important for multipitch. You don't want to start climbing not knowing whether your partner is belaying you securely, right? We practiced everything we learned so far all in one day, repeating the sequences over and over again until the sun sets. Then we headed back to our car and drove to a rustico house where we will be spending the night. Tip number five, bring lots of food. Practicing all day long will make you hungry and thirsty, so pack up some extra energy. And if you're assigned to cook for five hungry climbers after a long day of climbing, make sure to cook a lot. I cooked mushroom risotto for dinner and it only reached their throats. It was such a pity because they all find it very delicious, but it wasn't just enough. Good thing we're all resourceful and we were able to create a second meal to fill up our stomachs. The next morning, we woke up very early and had a quick breakfast, left our rustico house and headed out back to Puente Brola. Today's a big day because we are climbing an entire mountain today. So we took a 10 minute hike to where the first route will be. That warmed us all up. Fabio gave out some more lessons and tips before we start the climb. And then we prepared all of our equipment. We started climbing around 9 in the morning and our goal is to be done before 3 in the afternoon. Here's all of us climbing all together to the top of the mountain, applying all the knowledge, techniques and skills that we learned yesterday. By the time we got to the second pitch, I began summoning all the courage and energy I needed to calm my nerves down. The fact that we are more than 60 meters above the ground terrified the shit out of me. But I am very thankful that Fabio was there to support me and everyone else was going out of their way to lessen my worries and to make sure that everything's gonna be fine. Super, Kimberly. Clean your shit, girl. Tip number six. If you're scared of heights, take deep breaths and take your time in executing the rope techniques. The first thing that you need to ensure that you do in every pitch is to clip in your daisy chain and make sure carabiner is locked. Nothing bad can happen as long as you are properly secured to the bolt. Second, let your partner and coach know that you are feeling anxious so they are aware of your situation. And third, update your partner about what you're feeling. If you want to take a break, then by all means, take a break. multi pitch climbing is such a special experience. Just don't forget to enjoy every moment of it. It was such an amazing, liberating feeling to conquer my own fears and be really in control of my own mind and my body, and not the other way around. By the third and fourth pitches leading to the last one, I was just having the best moments of my life. I forgot about the fear, I was enjoying every climb. I was enjoying the view, the sunshine, even the wind. I was so excited to get to the top and celebrate my first ever 5 pitches of pure rock. Now the hard work is finished. It is time to have fun rappelling all the way down back to the ground. Yuppie! I hope you enjoyed my adventure and I hope that somehow I was able to share some lessons and values out of my own experiences to you. Thank you so much for watching and if you enjoy this episode, please do give this video a thumbs up. It'll mean a lot to me.